Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 15 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my P Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what we're going to be looking at is an extension of last week's lesson where I sort of introduced the concepts of move, assemble, join, and align, and kind of the differences between move, align, join, and assembly, and when one is appropriate versus when another is appropriate. Today we're going to advance on that a little bit instead of just understanding it, introduced to it, today we're going to try to master it. And so last week I gave you a homework assignment and your assignment was to build a multi-level gearbox where you were doing a very high amount of speed increase or torque increase depending on which gear you drove it from and that was your homework assignment and to do that it really required a very good skill in move, align, join, and assembly. How many of you guys were successful? If you were successful leave a comment below. I am legend and if you were not successful I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay so let's take a look over here. This was your assignment and your assignment was to build this mechanism, okay? It was to design it and then build it, okay? And I had a lot of luck designing it. I tell you, I am still struggling to get it printed, but I've gone in and I've tweaked up and tuned up the old Ender printer, and I'm giving it another try. Let's take a look over there real quick and see how the print's going. It failed about six times, but kind of like what was happening was, this is a very long build and then I would have a, a power glitch and then it would get messed up. You know, it seems to me that the recover thing on the ender really doesn't work. And if I try to recover, I end up clogging up my nozzle. And so my advice is if your print fails, start over, or if your power fails, start over. Don't try to resume your print because you will just end up in more trouble than what you started. But if you look at this over here, it looks like that first gear went down well. And I'm going to, it looks like I got a little problem in a little area on the second one. But I'm going to let the thing keep running and see sometimes it can recover on the second one. It looks like I've got a little bit of a peel on a gear tooth. But I'm going to power on through and let the thing go and then switch over here and start our design effort. And so what we need to do is we need to start a fresh new Fusion 360. And I am going to begin by building my two core gears, okay? I think it was two lessons ago, that would be lesson number 13, I showed you how to build a gear. And if you haven't taken that lesson, you might ought to review it, or some of this might go a little bit fast for you. But we're going to move on through, and I'm going to come up to create. What do I want to create? Ah, I stopped. I'd stop this and restarted it, so I'm going to have to go get my spur gear creator. I'll come over to utilities. I'll go to add-ins. I'm going to go to scripts and add-ins. I am going to go to add-ins, and then I am going to get the spur gear, and I'm going to run it. Good news is uh, it's telling me that it should be <clears throat> in, my, in my create uh, menu bar now. So I'll come down to create and boom, there it is. I want a spur gear. Okay, I believe on these, let me take a look at my notes here. I believe on these that uh, what I was using was a module of 1.5 and that'll make a little bit smaller gear. The smaller the module, the smaller the diameter of the gear is going to be. And I'm going to start with the small gear and that's going to have 12 teeth. Backlash, I'm going to put at 0.1 
and uh, the root fillet radius I'm going to put at 0.1 and then the height the gear thickness I'm going to put at 10 and then the hole diameter I'm going to put at 7. Now I haven't actually tested these yet. It might be a little bit on the test side, uh, on the tight side, but I am going to go ahead and try it and see if we can get this to fit together. So we will say OK and then boom, we've got ourselves a small gear. So we are well on our way. Now we need to build the big gear. So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to say create, create another spur gear. And we're gonna want this one to be the big one. So we're gonna make it 24 gear teeth. The other parameters are the same, okay. And boom, there it is. What is the problem? They're on top of each other. To move them away from being on top of each other, which tool would we move? Which tool would we use? Well, in this case, we're not aligning one thing to another thing. And so the right thing to do would be move. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to say move copy. Now I want to just use this coordinate axis and then I want to be very careful to not lift the gear off the build plate. So I'm going to say, okay, uh, I've got to tell it what to move. All right. And then I'm going to pull it over here like this. Why am I not being deliberate about position? Because I'm just trying to get it out of the way. We will arrange things later. And so I will say, OK, and then I'm going to move this other one out of the way. So I'm going to say move copy this one. Same thing. I'm going to move it this way. I'm going to move it this way. I'll move it this way a little more. I'm just trying to get them out of the way. So there, boom. Now, what I want you to make note of is I want you to make note that we have components. Inside each component is one body. And so inside the component, I have a body. Inside of this component, we have a body. So as we're doing moves and aligns, we could really either use a line component or we could use a line body since there's only one body in the component. Now, if you have multiple bodies in a component and you want to move one body, you need to be very deliberate to say you want to move the body. I hope that makes sense. Okay, that's good. And now what I'm going to do is I, don't, I, I want to start making my stack gears. I want to start making my stacked gears now. And so I'm going to duplicate these two uh, components. And then from those duplicated components, I will create my stack gear. Why do I do it that way? If I copy the body and paste the body, I have run into difficulty in the past. I have run into difficulty in the past doing it that way. And what happens is sometimes you can change the original one and it will modify the copied and pasted one. And so sometimes if you're not careful, copy and paste will lead to unexpected behaviors because you don't know that different parts are tied together. So let me show you the safest way to copy and paste. So I have two components. I am going to right mouse click the first component. I am going to copy it. Now I'm going to come up. You've got to be very careful with this. I'm going to come up to my top level folder, my top level component, and I'm going to come down here and instead of paste, I'm going to paste new. And when I paste new, it creates an entirely new component broken away from not related to the first one. And so I will take that and I will move it over here and I will say, OK, now I want to do the same thing with that big gear. The second component I am going to copy. And then I am going to come all the way up here. I'm going to right mouse click and I am going to say, I am going to say paste new. Okay. Now I have a new copy of that and I am going to come here. Now I am going to say, okay. So what is going to happen is these two are, you guys probably found out if you tried to build this, you have to have one large gear and one small gear without being connected. Because if you just stack, if you just drive stacked gears together like this, they won't move because you've got big driving small and small driving big, and there's no way to make that work. You have to offset them by one 
single level gear, if that makes sense. So we've got that done. Now I want to do my first assembly. I want to do my first assembly. And I'm gonna show you what I think will be a little bit easier way to assemble. Yesterday, what we were doing is when we were doing the, the assemble commands, what we were doing is we were aligning faces to faces. And you can see you can do it with faces to faces, but you can actually do it with a 2D line. And if you do that, or a 2D structure, and if you do that, then what you end up with, you can do things that before were taking two steps, and now you can do them in one step. And so what I am going to do is, I didn't, I didn't mean assemble, I meant align, okay? Now, why am I using align? Because align doesn't have anything to do with motion. It just has to do with creating the right relationships between related uh, components. And so what I will do is I will do an align, and this time, instead of aligning faces to faces, I am carefully going to see if I can get a good view here. I'm going to carefully come in and see if I can see the underside of this small one. And what I'm gonna do is instead of selecting the face, I'm gonna to try to select just the circle. Now, I don't want the cylinder. I want just the circle. So you've gotta select it carefully, okay? And that looks good. And then that's the from, and then the two is going, did I get the right one? Yeah, I did. Then the two is going to be this circle. And if I do that, boom, look at that, perfect. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna say, okay. Now, the first component is the small gear. The second component is the big gear. The third component is the small gear on top of the big gear. And then the fourth component is the big gear down below or uh, I, might have, I might have said that backwards. But what I wanna do now is I don't want this and this to be separate bodies. So if I come down to my last component, I've got a body there and I've got a body there. So the problem is this is a component that has a body from one sketch and a body from another sketch. So what I want to do here is, and let me sh make sure I've got this right, I've got, I've got that one component, that is a component, that is a component, and that is a component. The, the, the bottom one is a component. Okay, what do I wanna do? I want to join this one and this one and make them one body. And so I will capture the position, and then I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna say okay, and now what happens? This one lost its body, Okay, this one lost its body because it moved it over to this one and made it one body. Okay, so it took the body from the fourth component and it moved it to the third component. And now my third component has one joined together body. If it doesn't make sense, what I just said, stop and listen to me again, because that is really important. So what we need to make note of is, what we need to make note of is that it is this one. It is indeed this one that we are now going to want to copy. How many of these are, am I gonna need? I'm gonna need three for one hub. I'm gonna need three for the other hub, so I'm gonna need six. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to come in here to this component, I am going to copy it, and then I'm gonna come up here, and I am going to paste new, okay? And then, because I pasted new, I'm just gonna move it over here. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm going to paste new, and then I am going to get it and move it here. Okay, that's three, and then I'm gonna say, okay, and then I am going to get it and paste it again, paste new, and then I'll bring it over here and I will bring this one over here. Now I should have four, so I'll say okay. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to say paste new. And then where would be a good place to put that? I'll just bring it down like that. 
and let's look from the top make sure it looks okay that looks pretty good I'll say okay now that I'm at the top I'm gonna say move copy and I am going to take this one and I'm gonna pull it on down I'm just trying to pack them in here a little better uh, it's kind of pretty big jumps let me move it seven like that eight nine okay that looks good I'll say okay and then I am going to move copy this one I'm going to move copy this one and same thing I will move it down nine see if that looks good that didn't do as I expected let me come down move copy this one I want to move it down and that is nine in that one that was too much six four let's try three okay and guys I'm not being real deliberate because I'm just trying to kind of pack them in there and then this one I think I'll just put down here in the corner so I am going to move copy and then I'm going to select this one and I think I will just try to move it out of the way down I'll, I'll move it over to this corner okay all right there it is and let's go to the home view so now you could actually start printing the gears now if you wanted to and so let's go back to the home view that looks pretty good and then I really I really want to design at the origin and so I think I'm going to move these again so that I can design at the origin so I'm going to say take this one and then let's move it over here I'm kind of trying to free up the origin okay let's take let's take this one let's uh, yeah. this one that guy doesn't want to move let me see move copy I want this one I want to move it that way there it goes okay and then I've got my origin freed up now I think and we can align these better in a minute okay that looks good and there's my origin so I can design it my origin and then we will pack them back in so I am ready to do my sketch so I'm going to come up here and I am going to create a sketch and then I'm going to create the sketch on the XY plane I'm going to capture the position now what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to get those dimensions so I come up and I'm going to inspect and measure remember how far up you know what we need to know is how big is the outside diameter of the gear so I'm going to go from a point on the tip of the gear tooth to the opposite point on the gear tooth and that is 21 all right and I want the base to be two millimeters bigger and so that would be 23 so I'm going to come I'm going to get my circle I'm going to snap it and then I'm going to say 20 20 three like that that should be the base that looks good so I've got the base now what is the size of the big gear well let me yeah let, let's do the big gear now so the big gear is the big gear is I'll just draw it over here the big gear I'm gonna have to measure so I will inspect I will measure from the tip of the big gear to the tip of the big gear And that is 39 39 plus 2 is 41 and so I will close out of that and now I need a big gear I mean I need a big circle that is 41 and so I'll just come over here to a random spot and I will make it 41 like that okay now I need my construction line how long could this should the construction line be the construction line is the radius the pitch radius of the first gear plus the pitch radius of the second gear plus the tolerance luckily I can see the pitch radius here of the small gear I click on it back behind me on the sketch it says it's 18 is the diameter so what would the radius be 9 
This one is 36. What would the radius be? That would be 18. 18 plus 9 is 27. And then I also want, let's say, a half millimeter of slop. Let's, yeah, half millimeter of slop. So that would be 27.5 for my construction line. So I will make a construction line. I'll come over here and I will come 27.5 like that. Okay. Now that is not fully constrained because I haven't snapped this, but when I snap this over here, I'm thinking that should be fully constrained. So I will get my coincident tool. I will say I want this at this and boom and I am fully constrained. Let's put in our tangent lines now. I'll just go from here to here. Check that, and of course, I'll fix that in a minute. Come from here to here. Check that. And now I need to make, with select, make this. I think I finished my sketch, so I will come back over here, right mouse click, edit sketch, and I will need to make sure that this is not a construction line like that. Okay, so now I've got pretty much everything drawn. So I need to put in my, uh, I need to put in, I keep closing that sketch. Okay, I need to put in my, my uh, constraints. And so I start with my tangents, this tangent to this, this tangent to this, this tangent to this, and this tangent to this. Okay, like that. Now I need to make a coincident constraint between that and that, that and that, that and that, that and that. I am fully constrained. Now let's see if we can trim it without losing our fully constrainedness. We'll come in here and take these things off. Okay, and I'm fully constrained. That's good. Now I want to clean this up a little bit more by getting these dimensions out of here. I don't like my dimensions inside my body just because they start getting cluttered in there. Now I've got to build my hubs. The hole for the gear was seven, and so the hub with a little tolerance will be 6.8. We will come here, we will make it 6.8, boom, okay. We'll need another one over here, we'll come here, we'll go 6.8, and boom. That looks good, we're fully constrained. Now I wanna have that little ring for the gear to ride on. And so let's make that right here. And then what are we gonna call that? Let's call it seven plus two is nine. I know I said 6.8, but I want this a little bit bigger. And then I'll come here and I will create one that's nine. All right, there we are. And now let's just take a second, get select, and let's get these things out of the way where we can clearly see what our dimensions are like that. Okay, that looks great. I think I'm ready to finish the sketch and extrude. Okay, I'll get a home view. And now I like to start extruding from the inside. And so how far should we extrude this? Well, we are gonna have what? We're gonna have three double gears and one single gear. And each gear is, uh, each gear, the big ones are 20, so 20 times three is 60, plus the single is 70, plus the base is 75, and then the ring is one, and so that's gonna be 76. So it's 60 plus 10 plus five plus one is 76, but then we want one sticking out on the top. So I think it would be most excellent if we did this 77, all right? Now, uh, turn my sketch off, we'll turn it back on. Now I'm gonna extrude this one, but just for convenience, I will extrude it to that face. So I will say extrude to object, to this object and boom, there we are. So we'll say, okay. Now I'm going to extrude these little guys on the inside, so this, and I'll hit shift and get this get this, and now I am going to extrude that. The five for the base plus the one for the ring will be six, okay? Now I should be ready to just take this 
and I should be ready to extrude at 5. Man, this has gone incredibly well so far. But we're just now getting to the hard part. All right, we need to assemble the gears. We need to assemble the gears. And the first thing that I want to do is I've got to start with, I want to turn a big gear on the bottom and make the whole thing spin really fast. So I need to get this gear. I need to get this gear and put it here. How do we do that? Who is your friend? A line. Okay. And today is where I'm going to show you a pro trick on aligning. Last time, we were aligning things with the face-to-face, -face, right? And as I was assembling these gears, I showed you that you can align on a circle. And that is how we are going to do it. So we're going to peek underneath here. Who is your friend? Your friend is a line. And we're going to get this gear over here. I'm going to zoom in to make sure that I just get the circle. Just get the circle. And then where do I want that circle to go? I want that circle to go. It's going to go right on that inside circle, just right there on that inside circle. Boom. Now let's see if it really did what we wanted. Okay. And let's make sure there should be a little gap if I did that right. Yeah. And indeed there's a little gap there. So that is aligned right. Now what do we want to align? Well, I also see that all of these are upside down. Okay, all of these are upside down because I am starting with a uh, big gear driving a little gear. So let's see if it'll flip it over for us. I don't know if it'll do that, but let's just try it with an align. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to align, and I want to align that little circle with that little circle. And it did it, but it didn't flip it over. So now, uh, I'm just, I'm going to undo out of that. Okay. I'm going to undo out of that and I'm going to start over. So what I'm going to do is just, if it's an absolute move, what do I do with move and copy? I want to do it with a revolution. I'll come and I want to do it to a body. And so I will take this body and then what is the axis that I want to rotate around? Well, let's just pick the X axis and then that should flip it upside down. So I'll come over here and I'll look at origin and I want to flip it over the Y axis. And let's see if that'll work. Say select the Y axis. Okay. And then we want to go 180 degrees and let's see yeah that flipped it okay now it kind of put it way over there but that's all right I'll come over here now and now what do I want to do I want to align and what I'm going to do is I am going to align align make sure you just get the circle align that circle with that circle. Boom. Okay, let's check and make sure that it's lined up good. It is indeed lined up good. And so that is uh, that is going to be good. Now what I'm going to need to do is, I think I'm going to go ahead and animate these things. So I will build a joint. So I will come up and I will say assemble, do a built-in joint. Which one do I want to start with? I want to start with this component. And then I want to make a joint with this component. And then I want it to be a revolver joint. And now I've got to show it the axis. The axis would be right there. And so now that gear is spinning. Beautiful. So I can say, uh, okay, I can say, okay. Now I have to define one for over here. So I will say assemble as built joint. I want this one and I want this one. And then I want that to be my axis. And now that one is spinning. That is great. Now I want to join. I want to, uh, I want to create a motion link. Okay. What do I want a motion link from? I want it 
from this one and I want it to this one and what you have to see is we've got to do some adjustments and we can't see it perfectly but what we know is they're spinning the wrong way and so I want to reverse the direction and then I know as the first one moves as the second one moves 360 degrees the first one will move 180 why because the first one is the big one so when it goes around one time the second one goes around twice and that's how we do it so look at this this one's driving the one down underneath it that's connected to this one so this one is going twice as fast as this one is okay i don't know if we're going to be able to keep animating it with all of these different gears but we'll uh, we'll see how far we can go with the animation all right so we're going to do the same thing again and again i need to flip this one over so i'm going to say move copy and then i am going to do a body okay and then i am going to go around i'm going to go around again i select select and i come around here i am going to go around the y axis and i'm going to go 180 degrees okay now it has flipped over over there now i can put it in place okay and how do i put it in place i put it in place with a line so we will come up modify and we will select a line and then we will get just the circle come back over here And we will want to align it to this circle okay now that will be okay now i want to make that a joint i want to make that a joint so since i already have a joint here that first joint that i created i want to turn that off so it doesn't get in my way so under joints this first one i'm going to turn off so it doesn't confuse me which one i am working with now I want to create an as-built joint. I want it between this component and this component. I want it revolute. That's right. And now it wants the axis. The axis is there. Okay, so that's turning. That's good. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to say okay, and now I have to link those two. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to create a motion link. The motion link needs to be from this one is the driver and the driver is a big gear. So the big gear is going to go, uh, the big gear will go 180 and the little gear will go, uh, the big gear is going to go 180 and then the little gear is going to go 360 and you can see that they are both going counterclockwise so i need to reverse it let's say okay okay let's do the next one we'll get through these pretty quick now so i'm going to do who's our friend our friend is mr move and so we are going to move which one we're going to move uh, a body we're going to move this body and then what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to go i think this time we could go over the x-axis 180 degrees yep that looks good all right now we're going to align and i want to align that guy with that circle okay that looks good so i'll say okay now i am going to want to so i don't get confused i'm going to turn off that joint where i don't see it okay now i don't see it and now what i want to do is assemble as built joint this component this component it's revolute and it's about that axis okay that one's turning correctly and now uh, this 
this one is going to be uh, driving this one. So I am going to say motion link from here to here. And the first one, okay, the first one, when the first one goes, when the first one goes 180, when the first one goes 180, the second one's going to go 360. And I do think we need to uh, do it like that. Now, when I look at that, it's all working. Okay, that is all working as we see that whole animation most brilliantly. Okay, so that looks good. Now we're going to get this one and we are going to move copy. We're going to select this. We're going to rotate it around the X axis and we're going to go 180 degrees. All right, that looks good. Now we'll align that. So modify, align. I want this one. come over here right to that one that looks good say okay now I need to build my joint and so now I'm going to turn off that next joint that one so it doesn't confuse me and now I will say assemble as built joint this this let's try it again I'll select this one first no okay it wants it right there that's the axis and now that is turning okay and so that is joined okay now I want to create a motion link I want to create it from this one and i and this one is going to go 180 in the time that this one will go twice as far which is 360 and I need to reverse it. Okay, let's look at that. That is working, guys. This is joined to this, 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 and then it comes here. Okay, and it looks like when we start getting this many of them stacked together, we start getting a, uh, we start getting a little bit of a glitch in there. All right, we're going to do our last big gear. So we will do a move copy. I'll select this and then I am going to revolute and then I am going to go across the X axis. I'm going to go 180 degrees. I'll say OK. Now I've got to go down and find it. There it is. All right. Peek under where I can see it. We will align. We will align the circle and we will align it to that circle. That looks good. Okay. All right. Now I am going to turn off the next joint so it doesn't confuse me that one. All right. I will now assemble as built joint this to this didn't like that so let's try it again sometimes it's kind of hard to select these things you've got to get just the right view so I'm going to assemble an as built joint between this and this it is revolute and it still doesn't like that. I'll try it this way. I'll say align this and I'll come down to the base to select that, that. Now it still doesn't like it. Oh, I got to give it the snap point. Oh yeah, I always forget that third point. All right, there it is. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to get a motion link between this one who's the driver and this one that's being driven. And what I know is when the driver goes 180, the driven one 
is going to go 360 and I need to uh, I need to reverse it so let's look at that man guys this is really looking amazing I do think I see a little glitch in there somewhere that sometimes you get a little a little glitch but that is really 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 looking good okay we're almost there guys we are almost there okay so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to align I am going to align from the circle I'm going to align over here to this that looks good I'll say okay and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off that last joint that one okay and now I am going to create a joint as built and I'm going to make it between here and here and then I've got to select this okay that looks good now I need to see if I can do the alignment now so I will do a move copy I will do it on a body I'll select this one and then uh, the axis I will select is this and then let's see yeah that'll let me line it up all right now let's see if I can link those two motions so I will say assemble motion link between this one and this one okay and I need to reverse and then I need to remember that when the driving one goes 180 the big one will go 360 Wow now it seems like if I just try to do this by animate model what happens is the gears start spinning so fast that it doesn't look like it's working right but let's come in here and let's just see what happens I'll go to my first uh, my first joint and I will animate model yeah you see it just it's going way too fast that's not going to work what I am finding on this is it's hard to automatically animate this whole thing without seeing some glitches as it goes around but what I have found works really well if I come to the last joint that I made and if I come in and say drive that joint and then come up here and grab that little circle I can drive this thing around manually and it's just silky smooth all the gears are moving in the correct direction the right gear is moving the correct gear and so everything looks really 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 well and so I'm very happy with that let's run on over and take a look at our printer and see how we're doing as I've been doing this lesson it looks like I've got about three or four layers down the gear teeth edges are well defined everything is stuck down to the build plate so this looks good what I probably am anticipating is we just sort of approximated the tolerances and so we might get in here and find something is too tight or too loose but let's go ahead and finish building it and then we'll come back and see if we can fit it together so I'm gonna pause the video I'll catch up with you guys in just a second and we are back and we have a successful print I will say that this was a little bit harder to print than what I had anticipated and it was really a struggle with get that getting that first layer down good and what I found was making the very small gear teeth getting those sharp corners to stick on the first layer was a little bit harder than what I thought it was going to be but I persevered and I had to really do my best tweaking to get this first layer to, to, to stick and so I think when you have things that are small with sharp turns you've got to really pay attention to really getting that bed level starting with a clean bed make sure that you've got an, a good clean extruder nozzle and then we have success the other issue that I found was that on the gears the holes in the gears on that first level that first level the hole was a little bit smaller because I think maybe I had the nozzle very close to the build plate and therefore it was just a little bit smaller so when I went to put it together 
it would go on if I put the top side of the gear on first and then it would slide down till it got to the bottom side which is now on the top as I uh, as I flipped it over it was uh, it was hard to get that part to go on and so I just got a little file and I kind of fouled off that one inside it's very very small ridge on the gear teeth on the on the gear holes and then what I found was that it would fit together very nicely I think for my printer in my settings the 0.2 millimeter uh, tolerance between the hub and the hole of the gear turned out to work really well but in doing that you've got to work on the the, the side that was on the the, the the hole on the side that was uh, the first layer to go down I did it that way kind of file it out a little bit you, the other thing you could do is just increase your tolerance but then you're setting the tolerance based on that little ridge versus setting your tolerance on the vast majority of the hole if that makes sense but if we look at this uh, this works very well all the gears mesh I can drive the bottom gears from the top ones and it works very well the other thing that I see about the design that the hubs are very tall and very small in diameter and so if we were going to really uh, give this thing uh, you know uh, use this in something you could see that the hubs need to be sturdier I think it would be pretty easy for me to break these hubs off of the base if I wasn't uh, if I wasn't careful I think the other thing that would be nice would maybe to have a cover that slipped on it and then gave a constraint up here a mechanical constraint to sort of hold these two close together so that as we drive the gears there's not a tendency to spread this apart but I can just show you that uh, you know holding it together kind of with my fingers at the top helps it uh, helps it work so guys this has been a little bit of a tedious lesson but what I hope you learned is I hope you learned and became more comfortable with the difference between move and align and assemble and specifically under assemble the the joint uh, commands I'll just kind of recap it move is when you just want to move something not relative to another part when you want to get a relative uh, placement between two parts the best way to do it is with a line and then think of a symbol as really you do that function where you're going to be defining different motions now in future lessons we will be looking at more of the tools in uh, more of the tools in the assemble menu but what I want to do is I really want to teach you those tools in the context of a project okay and so I don't want to just come in and say here's the 50 different things you can do in assemble I want to sort of teach them to you as we go along in the context of neat little gizmos that we are going to be building wow guys I hope you're enjoying these lessons uh, taking these lessons as I as much as I am making them we've done some fun things for the last few lessons gears and threaded rods uh, threaded screws and nuts and bolts what I want to do now is I want to go back and start helping you to build good design practices and so I think now we're going to do a couple of lessons on design rules and understanding the design rules for your particular printer and that way as you begin designing things in the future you will understand things like tolerance and how to design with printability in mind and design things with tolerances in mind so far we have just been kind of winging it and I'm doing it just based on intuition for my printer and different things that are, I've already printed but I'm going to show you how to more formally understand the design performance of your printer and then design your devices to the performance that your printer is going to be able to get and so that's kind of the direction that we're going to be going we'll be using calipers in the future if you haven't ordered your calipers already make sure you get those ordered because we will need the calipers in order to really determine the design rules for our printer okay guys this has been fun I'm just loving this series of lessons having a whole lot of fun with it and I hope you guys if you like these these videos be sure to give us a thumbs up always appreciate you guys who are ordering your filament for my uh, my Amazon links down in the description and then share this with other people because the the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com I will talk to you guys later